You can build a recurring task in Notion and I have found a way to make the experience infinitely better. If you are a Notion user, you don't want to skip this one. As I discovered, Notion didn't really have an off-the-shelf way of managing recurring tasks. So I have been racking my brain to find a solution that works like it should. The way most apps have been designed. My requirements for setting this up were setting up of a recurring task once and taking less than 3 seconds to set it up. Avoid all unnecessary manual steps and after that it shouldn't feel that it's a workaround when I use it on a day to day basis. This needs to cover all the type of recurring tasks that I've mentioned here. Not having to keep moving tasks around. The dashboards should show only the relevant information and nothing else. I also wanted the ability to view dashboards using other templates that Notion provides. So in this video, I give you my new Notion recurring task robot. This video is divided into three parts. Number one is the demo with the input tasks. The second one is a quick peek at the dashboards. And the third one is setting it all up. Since we play different roles in our life, I have added a select property called the life pillar, essentially revolving around five items, work, home, business, family and self. Then I added another column called period, where we add everything from daily to annual on the lines I mentioned earlier. Next I added a column called project, where you can select whether it's a project, it's not a project, a habit tracker, a weekly review or team meetings. If you have more options, you can just add them in. Next, there's a column called project name. And of course, that's your individual project name. I've added something called work, sharpen the saw, gym, walking and none as the project names. Then, I've added a column called priority. This has been set from half star to five star. I found it easier to look at four and a half star better than say nine. If you just want a scale of five or a scale of three, then you just delete the rest of them. Next, you capture your task. After that, you capture the most important column of all, the start date. The start date is special. It's the first day of the year when you need to do that task. For example, if you have something that comes up on the third of every month, then you mention that as January 3. If you want to do the tasks on Monday of every week, then you pick the first Monday of the year. Now the year in question doesn't really matter. It doesn't need to be this year. What I'm trying to say is that when you move into 2021, you don't need to do anything different. You just continue without the need for any reset. The day of the week is a formula based on the start date. And lastly, when you finish the task, just capture the last due date. I took the due date term from August Bradley and gave it a spin. It's the date on which you executed the task. If you want a reminder, enter a reminder date and enter an at the rate command in the remind me column with the date and time. Notion will remind you. Make sure that it's at least a few days before the next due date. In summary, the pink highlighted columns represent the ones you need to capture. There are a number of formulae that get done automatically. The alert for example. This tells you whether you're current or overdue. The next due date gives you the next date on which the task falls due. But this column is a bit complicated to set up and we'll look at this when we review the setting up later in the video. The blue highlighted columns represent the visible formula in the engine room view. There are hidden columns which we will go through a little later. As a sample I've populated some entries. I pay my property taxes annually. My due date is on April 1 of every year with a 2 months grace. So I paid by May 30th and my next due date is in 2021. Let's take a monthly item. My YouTube channel review. I do a monthly review of my channel and the next due date falls on June 1. This is overdue since I've crossed it and I've not updated the last due date. I review my weekly tasks every Saturday and I've reviewed this last on May 30th. So I'm current on this one. I go for a walk and to the gym on alternate days. But the last days I did this was on May 29th and on May 30th. So I'm overdue. To make the data entry much simpler, I've created some templates and these are already pre-populated with some fields. The templates are the project, daily, habit tracker, alternate day, 
day of the week, weekly, fortnightly, monthly, quarterly, half yearly and annual. So it saves a few clicks for you. As an example, I'm creating a dummy projects and you can see the pre-filled items and another dashboard which is embedded within the project template. This saves you a lot of time and you can also manage your project activities from within the recurring tasks template. As you can see, you can pretty much configure everything and now you can manage this in one snapshot. So that's it for the demo. Now let's take a quick peek at the dashboards. You'll see how easy it is to view your recurring tasks. My first dashboard is simply the dashboard. It provides a snapshot of everything we need to do, daily to annual tasks, whether it needs our attention by marking its overdue. The last due date, the next due date, the priority of the task, and whether it's a project or not. And if it's a project, then the name of the project. This is a live update and so you can look at it every day. Now if you're at work, you don't want to be bothered with tasks at home or anything else related to your business. So you can filter the tasks to your work. But if you want to look at any other life pillar, you just change the pillar to that other item. In the reminder view, you will get reminded based on the reminder that you have set for yourself. For example, I needed to pay the life insurance on June 2nd and I've set a reminder for it. In the last due view, it shows me a calendar view of items I did on the last due date. So I get a clear view of when I executed the task list. The simple list view is a simple list. Finally, I've set up things for a specific day of the week. For example, I have a weekly task list review on Saturdays and a weekly catch up with the team every Tuesday. If you believe that this is what you are looking for, then the next part is for you. The whole thing works on formulas. Let's go through the columns one by one. You will notice suddenly that the engine room has additional helper columns. That's because they were hidden in the demo. And now I have revealed how it works. The first column is the day of the week. And this is the formula. The alert is actually based on the last due date. If it's an annual date, then if you've crossed one year from the last due date, it shows up. The same is repeated in a nested if till it reaches a daily schedule. So based on whether you mention it's annual or daily, the formula uses the input to calculate. Since you had the opportunity to enter any date in the start date, I need to bring out the events to the current year. That's where the helper column called first view helps. This brings the year to the current year. Now let's look at the series of helper columns starting with ND. ND represents next due. So I have one that's NDA representing annual, NDQ representing quarter and so on. Now NDAD is for alternate days. I've ensured that the date stays blank if the row does not have a corresponding period in the formula. Every formula here is different. The half yearly one, for example, calculates in months. The annual one calculates in years. The principle here is that everything works from the first due we calculated earlier. And you calculate the number of days, weeks or months from the first due. And it pops up as the next due, depending on what today's date is. The daily one is the simplest. It just takes today's date as the next due. So I'll go through the formulas quickly and you can see them on the screen for your reference. You can pause the video if you'd like to take a look at them in detail. Quarterly. Monthly. Fortnightly. Weekly. Alternate day. So depending on which helper column displays the data, I've crafted the formula on next due so that it pulls in that information. Once you've done all of this, I can hide all the helper columns that I don't need and use the formula columns that I actually need for that view. I have another column that I've crafted called PRD. This is a helper column defining the period and helps me sort in case I want to see the annual items on top or at the bottom. The last two columns are the last due date and the next due and is based on the columns of the same name. 
but I've added some text before the dates so that the Kanban view appears neatly. The formulae are big, but this project was even bigger for me because I had to first crack the logic that I would use. Did you enjoy today's video? Do leave a comment below. If you're not yet part of this community, do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified of new videos. If you like the video, consider sharing it with your friends. Stay safe, stay healthy, peace.